My name's John Mendez and I'm here to present in this month's motorboat and yachting little video clip of how to do something. This time we're doing passage planning and ideally what we're going to end up with is a sheet of paper like that which highlights all we need to know for our passage. Just the right amount of information, not too much detail. It's just like Blue Peter. Here's one I prepared earlier and we'll just go through the steps of how I got there. First thing I need to do is have a quick overview of where I'm going from and to and how far it is. So on the chart we're going from Poole all the way down to Guernsey and that's roughly 85 miles. The boat we're using cruises really comfortably at 15 knots so that means roughly 6 hours passage time. So we need to look at the tidal information and find out what's the weather going to do to make some decisions. And the weather is shown today to be easterly, three or four, going southeasterly, three later. So it's a decreasing forecast. And then we're given two pieces of information, fair and good. Fair means no significant change in the weather, and good is the visibility. Now I need to extract some tidal information from the almanac. There's three areas I need to consider. Paul Harbour is doing constraints when we leave. Secondly, Dover, because that will cover the channel for the middle part of the passage. And then lastly, the Channel Islands to find out when and what amount of water it will be when I get to uh, St Peter Port in Guernsey. First thing we want to do is look at our date, which is the 15th of October. And we can see it's in an unshaded area, so we need to add an hour. So low tide is given as 0544, so that becomes an hour on 0644.8 of a metre. And high tide... They don't give us a time, but it's 2.1 metres. It's going to be roughly midday. Now, because of that height, and we're inside the bridge at Paul, we need to look at the bridge times, which are here, and we can see that there's a bridge at 12.30. Now, that's always given in clock time, so it will be 12.30 on the day the bridge will open. That, I think, will work quite well with our plan. Next, we need to look at Dover, and you might think, well, if we're going from Paul to Guernsey, why do we need Dover? Well, the answer is, when we look at the tidal information for our cross-channel part, all of the tide times are given with reference to Dover. So I need to look at Dover so that I've got a picture in my mind, and then I'll put it on paper, of what's happening when. So having found out I need the Dover time, I look at the Dover section, which is here. And then we're going to go to exactly the same day, so it all makes sense. And we can see here that we've got a high tide and we've got to add an hour again at 13.24, 6.4 metres. Low water after that happens at 20.43, 1.3 metres. So when I look at those two, the key thing I'm looking at is that the range, the difference between them is 5.1, and that means I'm very nearly on spring tides. That means stronger flow, need to think about it carefully. So now we've covered our departure and our cross-channel section, now we need to look at our arrival. Again, we're going to want St Peter's Port Tide, that's our destination in Guernsey. We're going to need to look at the pilotage for the port to make sure we know where we're going. And we're going to need to look at the tidal information to ensure we know what we're going to do with the tidal gate at the ordinary race. Having studied those tides and tidal information, I now need to combine them to give me a best passage. I can see that from high water till roughly five hours after, the tide's going to be on the ebb, travelling west. And since I've got an easterly wind, that will put the pair together and give me the best passage for the cross-channel section. That coincides nicely for when I get to the Alderney Gap. Again, I'll have the tide going south, because the wind, although it's easterly, will tend to curve round the Cap de la Hague, and I'll get wind and tide together, and a nice push all the way down to St Peter Port. So the constraints on my passage are the bridge to leave. We can get the half past 12 bridge out. We then need to have a reasonable passage across the channel having put wind and tide together. And then we need to clear the sill to get into the marina at St Peter Port. And we can do that two and a half hours either side of high water. So in the evening from about half past six to about half past 11. We reckon on six hours for the passage. So if we're leaving at about one at the uh, entrance of Paul having cleared the bridge, we should arrive about 7, that works perfectly, we can drive straight in the marina, tie up, go and find a nice meal. It's good practice to note down the radio channels of where, what your alternative ports are. It's always a good idea to have a little plan B, 
So we've got two alternative ports. One's Cherbourg, which is on the French mainland, so we need to remember our passports. But that's easy access, 24 hours, all facilities. Good place of refuge if it kicks up rough. And lastly, we've got Alderney as well, which is just over two thirds along our route. Um, it's a little exposed to northeasterly, so we have to be a bit careful if the wind changes direction. But uh, it's got loads of mooring boys, and there's a little harbour taxi to the shore, and it's got a fantastic pub. And also at the bottom of my notes, I've actually put down all the channels for my intended passage, all the way from Paul, Cross Channel, St Peter Port, and then obviously the bridge channels as well. Now I've gleaned all that information from the almanac, the pilot book, and even on my little mobile phone, the latest information from the port website. Just to double check, I've got all the latest info and I haven't missed anything. Once I've pulled it all together, now I can actually put some lines on the chart. So now for some basic lines on the chart. We'd use a pilotage chart to come out of Pool Harbour. And we need the main bearing between our waypoint just off um, the uh, Durston Ledge all the way down to the Alderney Gap. And then we'll come on to the better scaled chart for the detail. So we're going to come down to our waypoint in the ordinary race and then down through the little rustle and then we've got a small pilotage chart for St Peterport itself for the last entrance. Now we just need to think about our tides. Our section in the middle cross channel nearly 60 miles and all of it's going to be cross tide. From our look earlier we know the tide is going west and the winds from the east as well. So both of those are going to be pushing us away from our destination. Quick course to steer calculation gives us the information that we need to steer up by nearly 8 degrees to compensate. Put that information in and we end up with instead of 188 true, 180 will be what we actually need to head. So we'll enter that and make sure we follow that course on our heading. So if the tide is going to the west, the wind is from the east, all of those are pushing us down past our destination. We're going to need to steer up to compensate and the calculations show it's roughly 8 degrees. So our original true line of 188 is actually going to become a heading of about 180. So in summary, taking the information at the initial point and looking at our constraints, so the bridge in pool, the tide going across the channel, the Alderney race and the sill at St Peterport, I reckon that if we get the 12.30 bridge, roughly 1 o'clock off the Paul Bar Boy, across the channel compensating for wind and tide but putting them together for slack water, using the ordinary race with a south going tide and a wind from the northeast will give us wind and tide and an acceleration in boat speed down towards Guernsey roughly for a seven o'clock entrance and we're arriving on a rising tide so if we get delayed at all we're still going to have plenty of water to get in the marina. Looks like a plan. Here we are, we've just moved to the classroom for better contrast to show you the same sort of information on the plotter. All I've done is put the same waypoints that I chose on my passage plan into the plotter and the massive advantage of this is that when I finish putting the route in I can compare what I have on the plotter with what I got from the chart and it's a real good double check that I haven't made any stupid errors. So first waypoints I chose were Pilotage out of Pool Harbour, down to the entrance, just past where the bar boy used to be, and then down and just off Dalston Ledge. Now on my chart work I had a bearing of about 180 and about 3 miles. That looks pretty close there. Now we can zoom out and take an overview of the actual passage across the channel. So just scrolling with the cursor brings us down to our space at the Alderney Gap. My passage plan by charts reckon that was about 188 true, that's no tidal allowance. That's just to the west of south, so that's probably 188, that's looking good. And then when I zoom in, I've got my actual waypoints for in the Alderney Gap. This is where the race is. Very important, I get the calculations of wind and tide correct here. And then moving across and moving south coming across to Guernsey. So we're just at the top of the little rustle there and then coming down to just off St Peterport and then we can zoom in and there's the entrance to the harbour. So I've got the waypoints in the right place 
And now I'll just show you a little trick that you can do with these. It makes it just a nice way to double check. So on my route I had four main waypoints. After the entrance I had the bar boy, number two, off Durlston Ledge, number three, down to the little Russell, number four, and off the entrance to St Peterport, number five. And I can compare the bearings, 180, 187, 188, 228, 228, 218, 218. So I've got my bearings correct, and then my distances were three miles, 54, 19, and four and a half. The slight difference there, there always tends to be a slight difference, that's just down to how the charts are measured, and obviously on the paper charts, my pencils. So overall, that's really nice and close, and I'm happy with that. I think that's a good little plan, and I've double-checked that it all makes sense. Lastly, you can also, with some of the plotters, put in your speed that you're going to travel at, and it will tell you how long the journey takes. So the journey, according to the plotter, if everything goes well, is 5 hours and 17 minutes from the last uh, entrance boy at Paul to the entrance off St Peter's Port. And of course that doesn't allow for accelerating, decelerating, any ev evasions that we have to take for ships in the shipping lanes and the pilotage at either end. So I reckon we're a comfy six hours which works nicely with our planned tidal usage.